Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and today I've got an initial review for you of the Nike Legend React 3 Shield. A winterized shoe today. You can almost hear the elements. I think this one's going to firmly slot into my winter running rotation, but in a very specific category. So I didn't try the original Legend React, so a bit of a new experience for me. I had lots of images in my mind what it might be like, but something drew me to this one. I kind of like the styling of it. I'm hoping perhaps that the React was going to be a little closer to that in the Infinity run rather than the React I found in the Pegasus 37 or the Zoom Fly 3. I didn't like that. I'm convinced that some of the shoes have different types of React, a little similar to Fresh Foam and Fresh Foam X. So retail over here in the UK is 95 earth credits. Notice I didn't say pounds. One big thing to tell you about is the weight. UK size 11, US size 12. This one comes in at 350 grams. That's a lot of weight right there. No info at all anywhere on the stack height in this one, although I would suggest it's quite similar underfoot to the Infinity Run. We gotta start with the upper first. So a water repellent upper here. I don't know whether it's just treatment to certain material, but there's not an awful lot of info on this shoe. I'd suggest that the upper here is vastly more accommodating than that used in the Pegasus 37. I really struggled to get on with that shoe. The fit was one good for me. No comparison here though, with a much softer, plusher feel. There's like an inner liner to it, which just adds another level of plushness. A sofa of a shoe. But in a good way. Lockdown's also miles better than the Pegasus 37. I'm really not a fan of those lace loops. Here we've got a couple of plastic pieces which help grip this toggle style lacing system. And we've even got fly wires as well. You know I like fly wires. I was only commenting to Mrs. Edbud the other day on a walk in my Pegasus 36 from last year at how great the lockdown feel felt in that shoe. Only two of them per side, but they do do the job. Only easier miles up to now, seven miles in fact, so roughly 11.2 kilometers. And I've not had any issues with that toggle loosening up or the fit changing over time. Easily tightened up, lockdown was simple to achieve, and nicely padded tongue section. And I do particularly like the use of this rubberized piece here. Just seems to hold the last bits of the laces where they cross really well. Certainly a nice fit around the collar here and a little less opportunity for moisture to get in. I'm not sure how well moisture can get out though. That's always been my big problem with the Shield shoes. We've got some considerable overlays here in the swoosh and round to the toe box as well. Even those fly wires are coated there to protect them and grip them around the shoe. And those overlays are on the other side of the shoe as well. Certainly structured in the heel section, there is some real rigidity here. I think that's needed from the quite flexible rest of the upper. I think this one's pretty functional in terms of the upper and it's a successful implementation too. I think you've got to look at the purpose of this shoe. No one's gonna rock this one in the middle of summer, unless it's raining, of course. I think though, ideal as a commute type shoe, if you're gonna to get to work or perhaps get back from work. And yes, some people are still working. I think if you're in a rainy climate, could really work well. I'm not sure all of the bulk is needed in the upper though. It is quite a weighty upper. It's not just the React that contributes to that 350 gram weight. So I'm gonna knock off a few points there and that toggle system is untested. I haven't used that before. I don't know whether it's gonna hold up. And what happens if it breaks? It's not just something you can replace really easily. So I'm gonna knock off a few points there. I'm gonna give this a 2.4 out of three for the upper midsole now so it's a react midsole here and thankfully yes it does feel underfoot closer to the react that's in the infinity run i really love that shoe it had a vastly different feel to the peg 37 or the zoom fly through just thinking about that shoe makes me feel bad i was initially a bit skeptical about this silicon section they've included in the back here i'm not one to kick my shoes off but i think if you've come in from a storm or very wet rainy conditions then it might be something that you want to do. I guess you can easily undo the laces there with a the toggle system and then kick the shoe off. So I kind of understand it, but it makes you wonder how much weight it's putting into the shoe. Yeah, I think in a wet storm, if I came in absolutely saturated, I think I'd turn a blind eye and perhaps kick them off. As I mentioned, the React here is more forgiving, more cushioned, more compressive actually, and a tad more squishy to the one that's in the Zoom Fly 3. Yeah, closer to the Zoom Fly Flyknit. Those of you who've worn both of those shoes will know what I mean. I think that's even more evidence there that React is not the same in every shoe. Perhaps they switched the formula up a little bit. I don't know. Perhaps 
one person puts in a certain amount more of some chemical and somebody puts a certain amount less, I don't know. It might be that I just picked up a Friday version of the Infinity Run. Underfoot feel here is further improved by the addition of a very squishy insole. It is one that appears to be stuck in and isn't one of the typically sized ones that you'd find in a Nike shoe from over the last 18 months. Closer in shape actually to the one that's in the Tempo Next Percent although it's not made of the same stuff. Just a really nice step in feel to the shoe. I was really pleasantly surprised. I would suggest though, again, the weight is the issue here and it's gonna mean that the midsole isn't perhaps the most versatile. I don't think anyone's gonna pick this shoe up to do tempo runs, any speed work or anything like that. It's gonna be a daily shoe to grind out those miles. Not one I feel like I wanna run at any sort of high pace. From that sense, it could be a really great long run shoe. In fairness, this is not a massive departure in terms of underfoot feel to the Saucony Triumph 17 that I tried out earlier this year. It's going to be a daily use shoe for me and that's what I think the midsole fits. I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 3 after my initial runs for midsole. Moving on to the outsole now. So there's only a small amount of exposed midsole here and the bottom of the Legend React 3 shield. Gotta say, outsole, top drawer. Nike Storm Tread rubber here which is a bit stickier than the standard stuff you get on the bottom of a Nike shoe. I'd suggest it's vastly superior already to the outsole that was on the PEG 36 shield that I tried last year. This just didn't work for me at all. I found it really slippery in wet conditions, which was supposed to be its forte. Lots of surface area here, and it was very welcome when used in some slippery areas. No slide in here with a strong outsole. There is some channeling cut into it there with the swoosh. Loads of multi-direction patterns all over. A little like my shirt. Just seem to work on a variety of different surfaces, on some gravel, on some pavement, on some dirt, no problem. Zooming through some puddles, the moisture seems to escape relatively easily, and I'd suggest pretty competent in the outsole. I'm gonna give this one a 2.7 out of three, only for the fact that I'm not sure about the durability of the outsole rubber itself. Bit untested from that respect. Only had tested one other shoe uh, that uses this type of rubber, so I can't speak for the long-term durability. But 2.7 out of three, it's a decent score. Value now. So in terms of value here, retail is 95 Earth Credits pounds. Here in the UK, I managed to pick these up in the sale for about 72 pounds Earth Credits. At retail, I feel these are actually pretty good value. If you know what you're getting, I think if you're looking to pick these up and run some very fast miles, just not gonna happen. Buy yourself the Turbo Shield or something like that. I think it's a bit of a niche shoe and not one for everybody. Some people just don't need a water repellent upper winterized shoe. It's just not something that is required in their running shoe rotation. Perhaps if your typical climate's warmer, drier, it's just not gonna be something that even pops into your head as an idea. But here in the UK, it's gonna be ideal for those who are running in a wetter climate where you're after a nice cushioned, stable shoe. I think as the temperatures plummet a little bit, and a lot of our routes will be drenched in rain, things are gonna get muddy and the sludge levels are gonna increase. I can see the Legend React 3 Shield being a great option. A workhorse of a shoe. I think the weight's gonna put a few people off as well and it's gonna make it even more of a niche shoe. I think Nike just need to cut out some of the weight here somehow. Maybe less of a flare in the heel. Do we really need the silicon? Can you minimize the padding perhaps a little bit around the very edge of the heel collar? Sadly though, it does seem React shoes are a little bit heavier. I think if the sticky rubber treads here hold up well, as that was one of the better parts of the rubber on the PEG 36 shield, might get similar levels of durability there. We shall see though, only time will tell. There's a few other winterized shoe options around, but I really like this one in terms of comfort. Just feels like someone enveloping my foot in a lovely warm blanket. And fortunately I've managed to get some gloves now as well, after the others fell apart. So my hands can be warm again. Value wise though, I just think it's quite a niche shoe. It's quite a limited use case. So I'm gonna give this one a 2.4 out of three for value. Only because it's quite cheap, really. Just wish it was a little bit lighter. Volvo-like comfort and some quality there too. So if I've added the scores up correctly, that should be 10 out of 12 for the Nike Legend React 3 Shield. Have you tried out any of Nike's shield options over the last few years? What did you make of them? Is this a shoe that you're gonna go for? Let me know in the comments below. A quick musical interlude for you.
Now, Christmas songs don't get any better than this one. It's not cheesy, it's got some sincerity about it. The Eels, everything's gonna be cool this Christmas. You can find this one on the Eels Useless Trinkets, B-Sides, Soundtracks, Rarities, and Unreleased compilation. It's like 20 years of Eels, B-Sides, and Unreleased stuff. Fantastic album. Everything's gonna be cool this Christmas is a rocking electric guitar blast where he even states at one stage, baby Jesus, born to rock. He talks about the fireside, the Christmas tree, throwing the logs on the fire. It's all in there. You can imagine him there getting very excited about Christmas and it's just released with this distorted electric organ, furious drums. It's at breakneck speed as well. I love this track. Ever since I first heard it, back on the B-side of uh, Cancer for the Cure. I think it was in 1998. It's been one of my favorites. It just gets better every year as well. When you've got so much music out there at the moment, it's just plastic produced tat. You don't want that. You want a nice wooden toy. And that's what this song's like. It was created and made to last. So go and check it out. Everything's gonna be cool this Christmas by the Eels. Okay, thanks for tuning in today, guys, and sticking with me to the very end. I do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button and the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running bones. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.